Guys, in the world of auto body and painting where we use air compressors, phenomatic tools, understanding the difference between PSI and CFM is very crucial. I am doing this video because I got a comment asking to make a video on this. What is the difference between PSI and CFM? So today we dive into the topic and we'll see the meaning of PSI and CFM. Also we'll see the difference between the both and how they impact on the performance of your air tools. My name is Raisan and I am an auto body and paint expert author and instructor and in this video I will tell you exactly what is the difference between the both. So it is going to be a very interesting video guys so see that you like the video now only and if you are coming on this channel for the first time see that you subscribe. So come on let's start the video. So guys in this video I will show you 8 points what is the difference and what is the meaning of CFM. So I have made a column already but there are only 4 points on this board at the moment because I could not fit them all at one time. So I will explain to you all of this first and then we will wipe the board and we will move on to the next 4. So before we go any further the first point that we should know is what is the full form of PSI and what is the full form of CFM. So let's see guys full form I have written a full form. Now the full form of PSI is pounds per square inch and the full form of CFM is cubic feet per minute. So I hope you guys now know what is the full form of PSI and what is the full form of CFM. With that let's move on to the second one and the second one is the definition. What is the definition of PSI and what is the definition of CFM? What PSI measures guys? What CFM measures? Let's find that out now. So PSI measures the pressure of the air delivered by the compressor. Here the main word is the pressure guys. It measures the pressure at which the compressor delivers the air. Well as when it comes to CFM guys, CFM measures the volume of air delivered by the compressor. Means the amount, the amount of air which comes out in one shot through the compressor it measures that volume guys. So PSI measures the pressure, CFM measures the quantity, the volume. So guys I am hoping you are understanding what I am trying to tell you. So now that you know the definition of CFM and PSI, let's move on to the importance of these units. What PSI indicates? What CFM indicates? So let's see. PSI indicates the force at which the air is delivered guys. It indicates the force whereas the CFM indicates the amount of deliver within a specific time. So time is important here guys. For when it comes to CFM guys it indicates the amount at a specific time. Means time is involved when it comes to CFM. But when it comes to PSI only force at which the air comes out is involved. So the important words I have marked with a red color guys so that you guys know that these are the words that you should be focusing on. So now you guys know the full form, the definition, the importance. Let's move on to the fourth one and the fourth one is tool performance guys. Now why these units are needed when it comes to tool performance we'll check that out guys. So higher PSI is needed for the tools or task requiring more force. So what I mean to say is more force is required when it comes to a hard work, a very difficult work. For example, when you are trying to take out a tire from a car, the nuts which hold the tire are so tight that it needs a lot amount of force to take them out. You guys know that already. Even if you stand on the nut, it is not going to turn. So it needs a lot of force guys. So when you are using an impact wrench, impact wrench is a tool which is used to take out nuts like this. So this tool needs lot of force and it takes out that nut with ease. You guys know that. Just a press of a button and the nut will start to rotate. So like this type of tools where you need more amount of force need lot amount of PSI. So higher PSI is needed in tasks such as when you are using impact wrench or when you are doing painting where you need air to spray the paint out. So when it comes to this type of things you need a higher PSI and that is the way it impacts on the tool performance. Now let's see when higher CFM is needed. Higher CFM is needed for tasks requiring 
continuous flow of air. What it means is you need the air for a long period of time and you guys know what I am talking about guys. Yes, you require continuous flow of air when you are doing spray painting. Yes guys, when you are doing spray painting or when you are doing sand blasting, you need a continuous flow of air. Now wherever you need continuous flow of air, you will need a higher CFM. That is the reason why I always tell you guys when you are buying a compressor, see that the minimum CFM that compressor should deliver is a 14 CFM which is required in this type of tasks because it needs continuous flow of air. Now when it comes to impact wrench, it doesn't need that continuous flow. You just loosen one nut and the tool stops. You don't need to keep the trigger pressed all the time. Once you are done taking out the four nuts, you are done using the tool. But when it comes to spray gun, you need to spray the paint for a long period of time. For that, you need higher CFM. So guys, with that, I am done with the four points. Now I will wipe the board and then I will explain to you the remaining four. So here's my duster and let's wipe the board. <laughs> okay guys, okay. Again, I have set up my board with the remaining four points. So the sixth point that we will look into is the relationship between PSI and CFM. So guys, increasing the PSI doesn't necessarily increase the CFM. What it means is when you increase the PSI, it doesn't mean that your CFM is going to increase. But when it comes to CFM, increasing CFM usually requires an increase in PSI. What it means is higher air volume generally require a higher PSI. Now you guys must have noticed that in your plumbing work, when there is a fatter pipe, the joints also should be fat. I'll give you an example by drawing a diagram here friends. So just imagine that this is a small pipe and water is flowing. This is the tap and here when you turn this knob, your P this water will come out through here. So this is the PSI and the water inside here is the CFM. So when you turn the knob here, your PSI will increase. But that doesn't mean the flow inside this pipe will also increase. But now just imagine that you put a bigger pipe here, a big pipe like this. Now this is your CFM and see the flow inside and the pressure inside is become more now. Now when you turn this knob a little bit, now because the flow is more, the volume is more, you don't need to turn the knob more. Even if you turn it a little bit, the PSI will increase. So you don't have to turn the knob more now because already the volume is more. So because of that, you might need to put a bigger tap with a bigger opening so that it will match the flow. So I'm hoping that you guys got what I'm trying to tell you here. So with that guys, with that, let's move on to the next one. And the next one is compatibility guys, compatibility. So tools often have a recommended PSI range for optimal performance guys. When you buy a new tool, on that box it will be written how much PSI that tool needs. So you should be always checking this type of things guys. Also when it comes to CFM, a recommended CFM requirement to operate that tool effectively will be written or should be written on that box what CFM it needs for it to work effectively. So when it comes to compatibility, check both these things guys. Moving on to the next one and the next one is air supply. Yes guys, air, the PSI is crucial for ensuring consistent pressure to the tool guys. So this pressure should be consistently flowing guys. It should not become less or more. So when it comes to air supply, so for that PSI is crucial for the consistency. But CFM is important to maintain a steady flow of air to the tool. Now what that means is guys, when you use a tool for a long period of time, for example, when you are painting, when you are doing a paint job, you are using a spray gun. Now you are spraying the paint. After using the spray gun for a while, the air in your two, in your air compressor will decrease and it will drop the PSI because the volume has decreased. Now that PSI to be consistent, the air flow has to be steady. The volume should be more. So in that case, the CFM maintains a steady flow of air. What happens is when the air inside your compressor drops, 
the compressor starts again and fills up that air so that you will get that consistent pressure. It will give you that volume and that steady flow to maintain the consistent pressure. Now if by chance your compressor do not start then your pressure will decrease. So, you will have to open the knob more to increase the PSI. So, when it comes to air supply, PSI should be consistent and CFM should be steady flow. I am hoping that you guys got it. Let us move on to the last one guys, last one, the eighth point and the eighth point is air compressor selection. Now, how you will select the air compressor on both these units? Now, go inside your tool locker and check for the tool which needs the highest PSI and the highest CFM and on that you should decide what type of compressor you need. Is your compressor giving that much of PSI? Is your compressor having that much of CFM? Then yes, you should. If not, then you will have to change your compressor and buy a new and a better compressor which will give you the right amount of PSI and CFM. So, I have already written here, choose a compressor with the sufficient PSI for your highest PSI tool. Now, if you do not have such high PSI tools, but if you are planning to buy a high PSI tool, if you are planning to buy a high CFM tool, then guys, think ahead of time and buy a compressor that will suit its needs. Otherwise, if you buy a compressor which has lower PSI and lower CFM and then you go and buy the tool which has higher PSI and higher CFM, then the tool will not work effectively on that compressor. So guys, I am hoping that you now know the difference between PSI and CFM. You now know the relationship between the both and how both of these things operate. So if you found this video useful, then see that you like and share with your friends and family. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then see that you subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon so that you will not miss any of my future videos. Till then, this is Raisam Fanai signing out. Until we meet again.